Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Um, if you wonder why this weird get up, I just have a bunch of stuff on keeping me warm, but I have the plastic on me because my hair is still a little wet. Now, what I want to say to you is some of you are asking God, where is your blessing? When is he going to answer your prayer? When is he going to turn things around for you? Well, there was one time when God spoke to, through a prophet, and the prophet sent his messenger for a man to be healed from leprosy. He wanted God to heal him now. The prophet told his servant to send the message to him. Get the message to him. Tell him, I said that the Lord said, go dip seven times. And that's how you get your healing. Now, he wanted the prophet to show up at his door, pronounce the word, the healing to happen, and case closed. Things don't happen the way we want them to happen in our lives. And we get frustrated with God because we're wondering, well, Lord, why didn't you answer my prayer? Are you listening to me? I don't get why I have to wait while other people get theirs now. Well, here's one of the reasons. Some things can't happen without the other. You cannot have daylight without the sun. You can't see down a street very clearly if the street lights aren't on. So there are some things that are prerequisite for a safe and a positive ending. And this man wanted to be healed, but God said, no, I need you to deal with your pride. So you go dip over there in that river. Now, he wasn't a happy camper. He was, matter of fact, very insulted, but he did. And it was only until he dipped the seventh time that he got healed. Had he gone and dipped five and say, forget about this. Let me get out of this nasty water. He would have died of leprosy, even though God said he would be healed because he didn't do it according to God's prerequisites, which was to dip seven times, not five, not twice, seven. So my question to you is what has God required of you that you think is too much? That's just, that's just taking it too far. It doesn't take all that for you to answer my prayer. Well, God knows us better than we know ourselves. And some things, even me, I'm waiting on God to do some things for me, but I'm asking him, is there something I need to be doing? Because I don't want to hold up my own blessing because while I'm waiting on him, He's got his arms folded saying, uh-uh, I'm waiting on you. Hmm. Is God waiting on you? You're saying that you're waiting on him. But do you have God sitting over there waiting on you? Some of you need to go back to school. You need to get that credential. You need to get the license. You need to get the the degree, whatever it is, you may need to, you know, you know, I heard a message by a preacher years ago, and he said, if you want God to bless you, you must position yourself. There's always a two side to that blessing. There's something you want God to do, and there's always something God wants you to do. Hmm, think about it. There's something that may be required of you to get his blessing. You're waiting on God. He waiting on you. What is he waiting on you to do? Are you avoiding it because it's difficult? Are you avoiding it for fear of failure? Are you avoiding it out of laziness? Are you avoiding it because it's inconvenient and you don't want to pay the cost to be the boss? Why are you avoiding it? You ever hear 
uh, well, I don't know. I don't know about football. So let's just go to football anyway. <clears throat> and if I mess up what I'm saying, laugh at me. That's fine because I don't have a clue. But I'm going to talk. You know how they say some people say things and they use words out of context because they really don't know what they mean? I may use some of these plays out of context. Forgive me. Now I'm asking you. Listen, God gave me this idea, this concept of a football player. Now the team is trying to make the points. They're trying to win. And the person that throws the football has made his his calls and he's getting ready to throw and all the teammates are scrambling on, on the field. What are they doing? They're getting in position. The receiver, I believe that's what he's called, must get in position to receive the ball so they can score. But they have to run as far as possible so they can score as much as possible without being interfered with by the opponent, opposing team. So in order for him to be able to win or get that point or catch that ball, he must change his position. Bust a move. Change your position. Get out there in the field and get ready to catch God's blessing. If you're not in place, the blessing will pass you or it will not happen. When I wanted to do hair, I was doing hair at home, bootlegging. I was fine, but I was working because it wasn't enough. And when I brought my wasn't enough complaint to the Lord, what did God tell me to do? Go to school and take cosmetology. He showed me a vision. C-O-S-M-E-T-O-L-O-G-Y. And I was like, cosmetology? I thought he'd give me something more glorious than that to pursue. I didn't expect it to be standing up doing hair all day. I'm already doing that at home. That's not exciting. Why? All I was doing was braids and weaves. I enjoyed that. But some of the other stuff I knew hairdressers had to do at the shop, I didn't think that was going to be any fun. So I said, okay, Lord, I cut a deal with you. They give me two weeks to get my refund. So make me fall in love with the course within two weeks, or I'm going to get my refund and drop the course, thinking I didn't hear from you correctly. I went to school. I took the course. Yes, I did. And by the fourth day, Mama Sita was in love. I said, oh, I am in my element. Oh my, look at this. I love it. I love it. I never would have thought. I never would have thought I would have loved all the, I didn't know all that was involved. And I loved it. I loved it all. Everything but the pedicure. I was good at doing nails and acrylics. I was good at doing the makeup, the color consulting, the finger waves, the roller sets, the cuts, the thinning, the, oh, along with the other stuff I was already doing. I loved it. That was all me. I said, God knows me better than I know myself. But I went. And in spite of the attitudes and in spite of the issues I had to deal with with in, in, immature uh, silly, unsaved, most of them, students. I had to still let my light shine, forgive, move on, and be nice to the nasty ones. But I passed my course. I got my license, and I did hair for 25 years, making money I could never have made at a regular 9-to-5 job. With control over my own schedule, with control over my days off and having the husband I ended up with, it was a good thing I had that because I had the flexibility to change my schedule if he had an emergency. God will help you once you position yourself.
But nine times out of 10, y'all, you have got to make the first move. The ball's in your court. Are you going to run down that field and get in position to be the receiver God wants you to, re to be? To receive all of God's blessings? Get in position. Position yourself for God's blessings. Bust a move. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Line yourself up. If you're not there, it won't get to you. But you have to be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing in order to receive that perfect blessing that you've been asking God for. Some things will never change in your life until you make some changes. God bless you.